Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with something a little bit different. Yes, today we're here on iRacing and maybe you guys are wondering, you know, Matt, you've got a whole channel that's dedicated more to iRacing and bits and pieces like that. If you want to go check that out, I definitely would recommend doing so as well. Yeah, we do a lot of iRacing, uh, Formula 1 content and some leagues and things over on my second channel. But yeah, today though... Let's be fair, anyone that keeps her in sort of the iRacing loop will already be aware what we're going to be driving today. Yes, it's time for the all-new Mercedes W12. Yes, the new F1 car from this year's Mercedes team has been released on the sim. Now, normally, I test my cars at the Nordschleife, so I thought we're not going to change that up today. We are going to keep racing these things at the Nürburgring. We're going to go for one map where we sort of just explore the car, see what it's like. I'm not even going to think about trying to jump in uh, to all of the iRacing setups. And then, of course, yeah, we'll go for a second run in, you know, sort of more of an attacking lap. Now, I always like to use the Taurus Farten uh, version of the Nürburgring. But, yeah, of course, if you are new around here and you do want to enjoy, make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed. But, yeah, when this got confirmed a few weeks back that it was going to be releasing on iRacing... Yeah, there, there was a lot of hype from a lot of people, and understandably so, because iRacing do such a good job with their cars that undoubtedly this thing was going to be won quite probably for the ages. It's it's safe to say, you know, sim racing has absolutely blown up over the last few years, and to finally get, you know, sort of a modern Formula 1 car onto iRacing is really, really cool. Of course, we got the Dallara IR01 uh, back at the end of last year, if I remember correctly, but obviously that thing was fun. But certainly not quite the same. So yeah, over the next few weeks, we're going to be doing a lot of comparisons and things like that as well. Obviously in these cars, everything like that. But yeah, of course this thing though, for those of you that watch Formula 1, you're already aware. Obviously the second attempt, obviously, of the final attempt really, sorry, I should say, of the regulations that we had obviously brought in in 2017. Of course, I'm a little bit gutted we don't get last year's Mercedes, just because obviously that thing was completely all-conquering. And obviously this year it's a bit more of a toss-up as to whether Red Bull or Mercedes have got the fastest car. So it would have been nice to have the undisputed GOAT and the undisputed fastest Formula 1 car of all time. And of course you guys already know some of the facts and figures. Well over a thousand horsepower in this thing. It's not often nowadays the teams know sort of how much power these cars have got anymore. As that corner is completely flat even on cold rubber. But yeah of course this thing... At the time of recording, we don't know. Is it going to take Lewis Hamilton to his 8th and record-breaking final... Well, not necessarily his final World Championship, but his 8th Formula 1 World title? Or are we going to see Max Verstappen in the Red Bull RB13B finally put a stop to it? Of course, Mercedes have been so dominant through the V6 Turbo Hybrid era. You know, we, we're already aware. You know, 7 back-to-back -back championships. It could be 8 this weekend, of course, in Abu Dhabi. And yeah, iRacing couldn't get this car on the platform at a better time but so far yeah it's just feeling so gripped up i've been watching sort of a couple of other people's reviews you know i'm a tiny bit late to the party you know i think everyone was desperate to get content out in this car but yeah a lot of people are saying it's actually rather safe which was kind of surprising though in sort of the way it drives and so far i'm sort of getting that vibe you know it's obviously a car with a huge amount of torque and things like that and obviously something that doesn't weigh very much so I'm certainly never going to get the maximum out of it. We might hopefully see an iRacing World Championship Series back in these cars down the line. But yeah, a lot of people are saying this thing isn't actually as difficult to drive as they were expecting. And I mean, the only real sort of comparisons we've got on iRacing are the McLaren MP4-15. No, that's like 2002, isn't it? Um, the MP4-31, I want to say. You know, the, the old one. I can't remember which year it was. Obviously, the 2015 McHonda. And, of course, the Williams FW31 as well. The Williams wasn't too bad, apparently, back in the day. But the McLaren, of course, where it effectively had a very, very similar power unit to this. Lack lacking a few ponies, it's safe to say. But, yeah, well, obviously, it was a very, very similar sort of power to this. And, obviously, the way the power was delivered uh, in a much less sophisticated car, you know, with a lot less grip and downforce. That thing, yeah, tended to be a bit of a handful, of course. And you guys remember, if you used to play even F1 2016, the cars on there were a right handful as well. So, so rewarding when you got them right. But yeah, really, really difficult to do so here. But this thing, of course, you know, it's got all the grip. It's got all the stability, everything like that. You can see we've got the battery deployment currently on the screen as well as we head up through the back straight. Obviously, a lot of kinks through here. That completely flat as we get a tiny bit out of shape on the exit there. But of course, eight-speed gearbox as well for those of you guys that aren't aware. Yeah, an insane amount of power and insane amount of torque. And yeah, this thing is just going to be an absolute weapon 
to drive as well. Apparently, iRacing are going to do a fixed series, so I'm tempted to run a season in this thing. Sort of see what it's like. I'm not even going to try and put it through the carousel, I'll be honest. But yeah, we'll, we'll try to avoid that. But slowly getting them to grips with it. And yeah, I'm going to be really, really intrigued to see how it fares when we head through the S's on sort of our proper attacking lap in just a moment. I'm probably going to go on to a set of the super soft tyres. Obviously, we're only all... Yeah, effectively what used to be the super soft tyres, but what is now, of course, the soft tyres. The C1s will try and get onto the car as well for our uh, sort of our proper attacking lap in just a moment. Actually, not too sure which ones these are. These might, might well be the C1s as well here. But yeah, this thing just gives you so much confidence. I really know if there was ever going to be a game. You know, I love F1 2021. I absolutely do. But iRacing, you know, when they when they give you a new car, it's a proper experience as well. You know, when there's something you really want to drive, obviously I'm going to take out the Hyundai and the Honda as well in the very near future over on my second channel. Of course, yeah, that one, uh, those videos will go live over there. But yeah, I just had to give this thing a spin. You know, even this, our warm-up lap, you know, we're just finding confidence, finding pace with the car, and it is so, so joyous to drive as we head in towards the final few corners of this lap here. And I think, yeah, we are on the mediums at the moment. So we're going to go on to a set of softs then. And, yeah, we'll take out some fuel out of the car as well, and then we'll go for sort of a proper attacking lap here on the Taurus Fun. But, yeah, this thing is absolutely wild, and I cannot wait to do a proper lap in this thing then. Struggles a little bit top end, of course, just due to the sheer amount of downforce on it. Yeah, let's just see. A 5.15 even then, and I wasn't even pushing. Could we get close to the 5s? So I'm sure, you know, if you do the proper Nordschleifer layout, you get very, very easily. I mean, yeah, much, much better people than me as well. I mean, look at the way it just stops. I mean, that's a stop-go penalty, but even then, that was pretty good. Yeah, like I said, let's go make a couple of setup tweaks, then tyres, take out some fuel, and let's get into a proper push lap. Right, so we've taken a lot of fuel out of the car. We've put it on soft compound tyres as well. Let's just see what we can try and do. You can see just how many ERS settings there are that you can now try and mess around with. I'm sure, yeah, if you want if you want to get a job at NASA, that's the way to go. But let's rev this thing up then. Oh, a lot of wheel spin as we try and get the car off the line. Of course, the timer will start at the Milstein Bridge. And let's go then here for a lap of the Nürburgring. I'm going to really try and concentrate for this one. Of course, like I said, I'm far from the best eye racer in the world, but hopefully we can still have a bit of fun with this car. Nice and easy as we head to what is the sort of normal final corner of the Nordschleifer. And as we head down, oh, big lock up in towards one. Just so I get the car slow down there and get it rotated through as you head down the hill in through this next corner. They're completely flat out of this thing. Normally it's a downshift in most cars. This one will definitely be though. I'm going to say back down into fourth gear. As we head in towards the S's for the first time. Attack the curbs on the inside. Oh, running a little bit wide there, but we got away with it. Again, this thing, you know, it wants to go through the corners. It wants to reward you there. So we actually get a little bit on the grass, both on the entry and the exit. Cycle it back up into seventh gear. As you head over the top of the crest. Absolute full commitment. Bravery, you know it will stick. And eighth gear as you head through the rest of the corners there. Through these next couple of kinks, of course, not really a corner of many cars. And certainly not in a Formula 1 car. One of the absolute scariest corners, though, on the lap up next. And it's going to be a breeze in this thing. This, it just it just grips over there. Break just after you see the uh, tarmac change colour. Actually rocking up against the curb again there. On the exit as we head down the hill in towards Foxhole. Try and dance between the curbs again. Don't want to really nudge too many of those, throw off any sort of speed in the car through the bottom of the hill. And then back up the other side. Down one gear on the way in, just to make sure we got the car over on the left-hand side there. And then through the next couple all the way down into second as you head through one of the slowest corners of the lap and immediately the car just absolutely romping away on the exit there once again this thing is an absolute rocket ship through the next one completely pinned in seventh gear straight up down into fourth oh again attacking the curbs there a little bit too much as we now head into our walls hit hit miss we've just got another fast chicane to navigate before then is again just getting a little bit over the curbs of course yeah these things would never take on the Nürburgring in real life, or at least not in full attack mode there. Tiny lift, you could definitely take that flat as we head in towards the tight hairpin. Again, it just grips up. It just finds grip everywhere. It's insane. As we head down in towards the bridge. Oh, we'll try and tip it in there. We got away with that. I've actually been, of course, to the Nürburgring in real life as well. So, you know, always is a joy to come back to this game as well. 
safe to say, yeah, this lap is going to be much, much quicker. Well, I was ever able to... Well, I never actually did it. It was my dad that did the lap of the ring. But still, yeah, this thing is wild as we head out onto the back straight. We're already 17 seconds up. This is going to be a sub five very, very easily. And I'm not even that good as well. It's going to be insane to see sort of what top people can do. Of course, this isn't technically the full layout of the Nürburgring. But yeah, I mean, top guys are still probably going to be able to push this thing way below five minutes there. It's already at the end of the flat out section. And of course, the flat out section gets even further extended than this car. Just due to the sheer nature of the downforce that was working absolutely overtime though around the Nürburgring. Third gear as you head in towards the hairpin before the carousel. Make sure again, we're probably not going to attack the carousel. Do we go for it? Let's go for it. Let's actually chuck this thing in to the carousel. They're over the bumps. It's trying to fight us off the exit there, but we get away with it and we get the power down again. <laughs> oh, this thing is so cool. iRacing, what a job you've done. It's genuinely brought a smile to my face as well there as we head through one of my least favourite corners of the lap here on iRacing. The curve's just so, so aggressive through there, but now we head into really the ultimate testing ground for this car, the ultimate proving ground there. Seventh gear as we head down the hill, down into sixth as you head through the 90 degree right there and then hold it in sick gear as you head towards one of the most famous corners of the lap. Hopefully we're not going to feature on a crash compilation. No, we do not. But I'm sure certainly if this was real life, there would be a lot of people standing around and watching. Fourth gear again as you head through the left in towards the right king and then back down the hill in towards what is normally a horrible little crest. This thing though, we've got so much downforce. We might have been able to get through there in seventh, I'll be honest with you guys. There's now just a few more corners to go. Running a little bit wide over the curbing now. I don't think we've picked up a 1x on this lap either, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no 0x so far in this session, but just a few more corners to go then. Here at the Nürburgring, it's kind of insane just how quickly this lap has gone by. Mini carousel. Oh, really chucked it in there, but the car banks it around a little bit on the exit. One more corner to go before you launch it out onto the back straight away there and out of the final corner. That's going to be a lap of the Nürburgring. Just like that, under five minutes from gantry to gantry there. 450.8. Holy moly, iRacing, what a car you've got on your hands. If you guys have got iRacing, I cannot stress enough, you need to give this thing a go as we get back to the pit lane. Oh, <laughs> oh it's certainly, it's certainly intense. I've got to put the pit limiter on, so unfortunately we're going to get another slowdown penalty there, but... I mean, if you've got iRacing, this is quite possibly the best $12 you're ever going to spend in your life. What an experience just to take it around this track as well. They're iRacing. Oh my god, they've just brought it to another level on the sim there. That was such an insane ride around the Norge life. But like I said, I'm going to do some comparisons uh, between, you know, this car and F1 2021 around a few other tracks as well, but... Yeah, it's a completely different experience at the end of the day. Can we do donuts? Of, of course we can do donuts as well to finish off there. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we will definitely be back very, very soon with more Formula 1 content. Holy moly.
none of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel supporters. So a massive thank you to The Travesty, Patrick, Chuan, David, Ben, Aiden, Estathios, Cato, Sean, Johnny, McBlam, Mighty Spork, Tazief, William, and Nanon for becoming channel members. If you want to be featured at the end of all these videos, make sure you just click the join button down below.